y'all, it's Courtney, and I am another video squeezed in there. Um, so, this is my second part to this video, the drama community is on fire. Um, if you've never seen my face before, it's probably because I have been part of the drama community for three and a half to four years, but I'm usually in a more niche, um, corner of the drama community, um, I call it the trailer park of YouTube, lovingly, of course. Um, a lot of people are surprised when they find out that there's different sectors of the drama community. So if you guys have any questions on that, leave them down in the comments and your mind will be blown. Um, however, today I'm going to be talking about um, the beauty drama community. Um, and I really don't usually cover those kind of topics um, simply because... Mostly what I cover on my channel is like uh, mental health, addiction, um, recovery. Um, actually, you know, my channel is just kind of like a grab bag of things. And if a drama speaks to me and I have like, if it hits me here, then I talk about it. Um, but sometimes I don't talk about drama. So if you like channels with a little mixture of things going on, then I'm your girl. Um, if not... That's okay too. So anyways, um, so I had no idea that there was even a drama going on between all the drama channels, um, the beauty drama channels that is. Um, and I just found out about this not too long ago. And what I found out was appalling. Um, I am a, a recovering addict myself. Um, I have seven, a little over seven years clean from heroin and Xanax. So this subject really, really got to me. Um, and in my first part, I, I was going to talk about all of it in one video, but I had a lot to say. So in my first video, I spoke of um, the part where T by Alley had went into a bunch of DMs and said that Nick Snyder relapsed. Not that he had drank some alcohol, but that he had relapsed, which... For anybody that has struggled with addiction or knows somebody closely that has struggled with addiction, when you say relapse, we all know what that means. We think they're drug of choice. If you're a crackhead, which I don't mean that in a, in a derogatory type of way, um, that's just what somebody would call you. Um, somebody would call me a base head or a dope head, you know what I mean? And I wouldn't get mad about it because it's the truth. Um, I might not be doing it anymore, but at one time I was a dope head. Um, I've been called junkie, I've been called them all, and, you know, whatever. Uh, but if your drug of choice was crack, and somebody told me that you relapsed, I'm gonna think you're smoking crack again. Uh, that's just how it is. So, that was very manipulative. So, today, I want to talk about the aspect of T by Allie, um, when she went to the party, the housewarming party of Nick Snyder's in, um, Houston, Texas, um, apparently she kind of acted a fool. Um, apparently I spoke more about it in my first part of the video, but she just didn't like how the trip went. She didn't like how she was feeling. She didn't like how she was treated. Um, I don't think she was treated any type. Well, maybe she was after her acting weird a little bit because she, admit, admittedly by her, she did act bratty and kind of childish and, um, she was, uh, kind of off putting towards everybody else and so I'm sure that they probably started feeling a kind of way towards her as well. And then that made things even worse. Um, it kind of almost sounded like she had some social anxiety. Um, but instead of uh, being more open about it, she just kind of withdrew and acted a little more bratty about it. Um, and it just made things worse. That's a guess. I don't know for sure. But just with the way that I've pieced things together about how everybody said she was acting and such, it sounded like that. Um, so she didn't like the way the trip went. So right before she was going home, she had tweeted out, um, after the event, after the way things went here, meaning in Houston, Texas, um, I have never wanted to use heroin as badly as I do right now. I've never wanted to relapse as badly as I do right now, which scares me. Because I know exactly where I'm going as soon as I get off the plane. For anybody that has any common sense, you know exactly what that means. That means I don't like the way I was treated here in Houston, Texas. 
and I've never wanted to use dope so bad, and as soon as I get off the plane, I'm going to my dope man's house. Which is very highly manipulative, because first off, she didn't have to say it, but we all know that she was trying to manipulate the situation to make everybody feel a way towards all the other people. And I'm not saying that she's completely wrong in all this situation. Let me get to that. For you people that are on her side, I get you too. I'm an empath and I can see everybody's point of view. But I'm going to say where she's wrong first. Um, that's not okay to do. You cannot manipulate a situation by saying, Oh, I'm going to relapse. I don't like how this went. So I'm going to relapse and then subject drop. Nobody else is allowed to bring it up because... I'm an addict, and if you push me about something, then I'm just going to go relapse, and it's going to be your fault. That's not how it goes. Um, you are in control of you. Yes, I will agree that there has been rough spots in my life where all I wanted to do was relapse, because I knew if I took a couple Xanax, it would all go, go away for a little while. I'd be relaxed for a little while. I wouldn't even care about my problems for a little while, but I also knew the next day I would wake up and feel so much shame, so much guilt. And I would feel even worse. The longer you don't deal with something, then whenever you come to clarification and your head's all cleared up, the worse you feel. So then the more, the more you want to get high again. That's how addiction works. It's a cycle. So I can understand where in one way, every time something bad happens, you want to get high. But that's your addiction. That's the monster of addiction. Just because you got clean does not mean you beat the monster. It just means you kicked it down a little bit. But any time you give it an inch to creep in a little bit, it'll try to take over again. And it'll try to tell you, oh, well, you know, you haven't used in seven years, so one time isn't going to hurt. You know how much better you'll feel. You'll know, you know that you won't worry about your problems for a while. It's been so long since you used. Using one time isn't going to hurt anything. You know, you're you're in a bad mood, you're not feeling well, you know that that one, that one hit's going to make you feel so much better. And then, you know, tomorrow you can worry about it then. Because it's a disease. And it's a disease that will lie to you. Because we all know anybody that has struggled with addiction, knows anybody that struggled with addiction, even knows somebody who knows somebody who struggled with addiction, knows that that's not, it's not that simple. That one last time is never just one time. If you let it creep in enough to tell you that that one last time is okay, it's going to be one more time and one more time and one more time and one more time until you're back in full-blown addiction. Or this has happened to more than a handful of friends, more than a handful of friends of mine. They wanted that one last hurrah, that one last party, that one last... You know, or they were down and they were out and they were feeling bad and they just wanted to use just to get that feeling away. And guess what? They went and tried to use how much they used back whenever they were using and or they didn't even try to use that much. They just used one bag. But because they their body just wasn't used to it, it killed them. <laughs> Done with one 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 shot or one snort or whatever. Done. That one last time is never worth it. Never. Because either you, you'll feel guilt and you'll feel so much pain over that one time. And then you just want to use again because you're feeling like shit. Or you kill yourself. It's one or the other. There's never, there's never feeling good about it the next day. Nobody feels good about it. So, I mean, it's just, in, in, in every way, it's just not worth it. Um... But back to the manipulation part, it is really awful, especially since a lot of the drama community are younger. Um, and I'm not saying stupid in any way, because some of them just haven't dealt with addiction. They don't know um, that addiction is a very manipulative disease itself. It manip manipulates you, so you don't even realize that you're manipulating everybody else. Um, but that's what it is to say, oh, well, I'm going to relapse and it's your fault. Or, I'm going to relapse and it's because of this person or because of this situation or because of that situation. 
um, I have seven years clean and now I tried to re I tried to film this video once already and the first time I tried to film it I was talking talking and talking and didn't realize that I wasn't even filming but when I was talking I came to the realization that my dog just died two days before Thanksgiving and it was so rough I'm just now getting to the point where I can talk about it without fucking breaking down um I cried for a week well I cried for like two weeks straight but like after he passed I cried for another week straight um she just left um and oh I thought she just left sorry she will she leaves at 20 after she knows what time sorry guys there's a two-hour delay and my kids daddy and punky are trying to figure out what time she's supposed to leave <laughs> um but it, I came to the realization in the middle of that video that that was the first time I have ever been through something really serious and relapse never crossed my mind. Not even once. It didn't, it didn't even, it, it didn't even compute with me and I didn't even think about it. And to me, that was so mind blowing whenever I realized that, wow, I, I didn't even think about it. And because every other time any situation has happened that was stressful, it went through my mind. Whether it was a split second or a million times, it still went through my mind. And this is the first time in my life that I can say that relapse didn't go through my mind. So I get it. Anytime something gets stressful, it does cross your mind. Um, I can't believe that it didn't cross my mind this time. That doesn't mean that I'm cured, but it means that things are getting easier to deal with, you know, and, and, and my mind is healing. Um, that's the way I'll take it. And I just, it still doesn't make it okay, though. Just because you have a disease, it does not make it okay to manipulate people, period. Um, and she knows this. And she also knows that um, the reason why I'm being so harsh about it is because, especially somebody like her, should know better than to do this stuff. She is such an advocate, and so is Nick Snyder, for uh, recovery. But then she's going to go and use manipulative tactics surrounding recovery and addiction and all that to gain sympathy. That's not okay. And my whole thing, especially with her sending the DMs about him relapsing, that was a dick move, especially from her, considering she's an addict as well. So she, of all people, should know how much it hurts and how much it sucks when you have worked so hard to get where you're at and somebody starts rumors that you're relapsed and you get questions on whether you're off the wagon. It almost like takes all that pride and stomps on it and spits on top. It sucks so bad. Hasn't happened to me for a few years, but in the past it has happened where there's been uh, rumors that, you know, I was, that I fell off the wagon or this or that. And I'm like, it sucks. It's, it's really, I can't even think of the word right now, but it, it, it hurts you in your heart. It really just like all that pride, it just kind of crushes it. Um, and I'm sure she knows how that feels and that's what makes it so much worse because she knew what she was doing and that's why she went straight to saying he had relapsed because she wanted to hit him where it hurt because she felt some kind of way about how she was treated while she was in Texas. That's not okay. However, I will say I also don't agree with how she was treated not by the drama community because I'm sure they've said things too that were you know questionable um, I'm sure they've done things too um, I just am talking about in particular I did see a few tweets telling her to go ahead and overdose and kill herself or go go die or go ahead and go or uh, go overdose and die um, things such as that and that is not okay either I want to make that clear just because somebody did something wrong doesn't make it okay for you to tell them to go overdose and kill themselves. That's not cool either. I know 
that people like to be edgy behind the keyboard and think that they can say whatever behind the screen. But the person that's reading that, yeah, it's from behind the screen, but it still hurts. It doesn't matter whether you're behind a screen. It, do, it doesn't make the words sting any less when, when you read them. And I, for one, know that if I told somebody to just go kill themselves or told somebody to go buy some dope and overdose because we don't care anyways or whatever, if I then found out that that person did indeed go commit suicide or go and, go and buy that bag and ended up overdosing and dying, I would never, that would lay in my soul for the rest of my life. That would eat at my soul for the rest of my life. That of the possibility that the last thing that that person read was me telling them to go and overdose because nobody would care anyways. So please don't do that, guys. I know that it's easy to say mean things online to people. Especially when they're doing wrong, especially when they're doing such nasty things themselves, but it doesn't make you any better. Just because they did something bad, you can't say something just as bad and think it's okay. I hope to God that the people that said that to her, love you too, have a good day. I hope to God that those people that said that to her never have a mom or a friend or family, or anybody. I hope they never have anybody that dies of an overdose. Because it is such a surreal, terrible thing because there's so many unanswered questions. What were they feeling in that moment? What pushed them over the edge? Or commit suicide more? Because a lot of overdoses are accidental, but um, sometimes they're not. So there are still questions left to where you're like, why? Why, why, why? That's always the question is why? And you'll never get the answer. You'll never fully know. So many people every single day lose a mom, lose a father loses a daughter, a, a, a lover loses their soulmate, a, a child loses their parent. I mean, it's, it happens every day. And to tell somebody to go and do that because nobody would care doesn't make you any better it just doesn't so anyways guys i i don't know if this is going to be the last one on this situation there's a lot more that i'd like to talk about but i don't really know that it really hit me quite right here um so i don't know if if my heart will be in it and that's what i like to talk about is things that my heart's in it and i have real feelings about it um, so, I don't know if there's anything that you guys want to hear me, uh, gab about because I'll go on for hours if you let me, just let me know if there's anything that you would like to hear about, um, or any video suggestions. I have a video suggestion for here in a little bit. I'll probably wait till later on this evening to post it so that this one doesn't get overcrowded by it. Um, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope that you get to spend it with somebody that you love and am I still going? Yep. Awesome. I thought that it shut off on me again. <laughs> My front facing camera is broken, so I can't even tell if I'm in, in the camera or not. So if I'm not in the camera or whatever, I'm sorry. I tried. All right. Love y'all.